Hey gang, here's a quick little edit I did of some photos I took with my phone on some of my trips to Texas and Virginia. Um, this is before I knew how important it was to take pictures in landscape mode, so uh, I apologize for these black bars here. It's a learning process, it's a journey, and we're at the very beginning of it, so appreciate you being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Here's what we got. The Civil War produced a number of romantic figures, and Jeb Stuart was no exception. Today we're going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite Confederate generals and cavalry commanders. Jeb was actually an acronym for his first three names, James Ewell Brown. He became known for his style of dress and bold tactics. His hat, which he always wore cocked to the side, featured an ostrich plume. Stuart led his cavalry corps on two successful circumnavigations of the Union Army in 1862. While Jeb never drank, his release was his love of music, and he had his own personal band with him during the war, led by a man named Sam Sweeney. Sam's fate, <clears throat> fame was derived from his brother Joel Sweeney, who was credited as being the inventor of the five-string banjo. They played such tunes as Her Bright Smile Haunts Me Still, Lorena, and of course join the cavalry. He came from a long line of accomplished military leaders. His great-grandfather, Alexander Stewart, was a regiment commander during the Revolutionary War. His father, Archibald Stewart, was in the War of 1812 and later went on to become a U.S. representative from Virginia. He left home at the age of 12. His classmates at West Point coined the nickname Beauty for him because of his short and retiring chin. After graduation, Stuart wore a long, well-groomed beard to hide that chin. There at West Point, he became acquainted with several Civil War generals, including Robert E. Lee, who was the superintendent of the academy in 1852. Stuart was an excellent student and was appointed a cavalry officer after demonstrating his skill at horseback riding. He graduated 13th in his class of 46. He was also an excellent engineering student, but was relieved when he wasn't assigned to the Army Corps of Engineers, which he found to be a complete bore. In 1859, Stuart received a U.S. patent for a piece of cavalry equipment that he invented called the saber hook. He was paid $5,000 by the federal government for a right to use a license. After school, he served in the U.S. Army and in Texas, and during the period of Bleeding Kansas. Also, he was in military engagements with Indian tribes where he was wounded in a mounted attack against the Cheyenne. In 1859, he served under Robert E. Lee when the U.S. military captured John Brown at Harper's Ferry. Stewart met his wife Flora in 1855 and the couple was engaged within two months. The newlyweds proved to have an unbreakable bond and upon his death, Flora wore a black armband for the rest of her life. Jeb had three children, only two survived past birth. A girl was born in 1856 but died the same day. Flora gave birth to another girl who was named after her. In 1860, a son arrived named Philip St. George Cook after Flora's dad. But Stewart took great offense when his father-in-law chose to fight with the Union in 1861 and he changed his son's name to James Hill Brown Stewart Jr. Once after nearly getting captured by Union troops and having his signature hat and cloak confiscated, he went for revenge the following day. It was a gamble, but he and his troops commandeered the headquarters of Major General John Pope. Stuart not only got his clothes back, but he also walked out with Pope's full uniform, not to mention orders that detailed the General's plan for reinforcements in the upcoming weeks. In June 9, 1863, Stuart led his forces in the largest cavalry engagement in American history at the Battle of Brandy Station, which was a victory for the Confederacy. Despite his many successes, Jeb Stuart's reputation was seriously blemished by his failure to get to Gettysburg in time for the first day of the pivotal engagement. Many historians blame him as a major factor in the loss and leaving Robert E. Lee without badly needed reconnaissance. Stewart died at a young age 
of 31 in 1864 on the outskirts of Richmond. He was shot by a dismounted Michigan trooper with a pistol and died the next day. His daughter Flora had died from typhoid fever just a month earlier. Reportedly, Stewart's last words were, I am resigned. God's will be done.